for member statements. I recognize the member for London Fanshawe. I'll take my mask off for you to recognize me, Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, I'd like to bring to attention to this government's mishandling of a youth justice centre closure in my city of London. Within six short hours on March 1st, the staff and youth at King Street Detention Centre were told the program was closed, everyone was without a job, and all the youth were to be transferred to Hamilton. These vulnerable youth have been ripped away from their families and support networks and robbed of the opportunity to integrate back into their home communities. I spoke to a former worker and he told me that when he went into work on March 1st at 3 p.m., he had no clue that it would be his last day. Imagine that, losing your job in the middle of a pandemic and while working with a vulnerable population. He and his colleagues feel disrespected by this decision. There was no direction or support from the ministry. Everyone I've talked to has had the same question. Why was this done without a transition time for the youth, the staff, and communities of London and Hamilton? This wasn't an isolated incident. 26 centres across Ontario have been abruptly closed. I applaud the Ontario Ombudsman's decision to investigate these closures, and I look forward to reading his report. This could have been done so much differently and to respect both the children and the workers in those communities. Thank you, Speaker. Very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Speaker, I rise today to pay tribute to the lives and faithfulness of two remarkable men, my Paca Andy Viersen and my Opa Jake Osterhoff. My Paca Andreas Viersen was born in the hamlet of Anyam, Friesland, in the Netherlands, and immigrated to Smithers, BC, at the age of 22. He met and married the love of his life, my Beppa Fetcha, in 1955, and they were blessed with 10 children in Smithers, BC, and near Landia, Alberta. A lumberjack, bush clearer, community builder, farmer, and avid political watcher, my Paco was first and foremost a man of God whose deep faith defined him. He went to rest with his savior after a short illness on December 6, 2020. My Opa, Jake Osterhoff, was born in Loch Hallervain, Drenthe, and immigrated to Chatham, Ontario at the age of 15, where he met and married the love of his life, Maya Omanel, in 1959. Together, they raised eight children. A lifelong farmer, in later years Opa could be found baking, biking all over the Niagara region or volunteering with Oma for the church, Meals on Wheels, or local causes. Opa joined his beloved saviour on January 30, 2021. My grandfathers were truly remarkable men whose families were part of the underground resistance in the Netherlands, immigrated to Canada with pennies to their name after the Second World War, and worked hard to build up successful businesses and raise families in this new country of Canada they loved so much. Despite their success and accomplishments, they were both humble and godly men who would be the first to confess that they were not their own, but belonged body and soul, both in life and in death, to their faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. I join their many children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren in giving thanks for the lives of Andy Viersen and Jake Osterhoff. Thank you. Member statements. Thanks. Member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I rise to speak to the Ontario Small Business Grant. Quite frankly, it's been a great disappointment for many of the businesses in Niagara. After waiting 11 months to provide any form of support for small business affected by COVID-19, this government introduced the Small Business Grant. It came as welcome news to many local businesses in Niagara. However, many of them quickly learned they couldn't even apply. Some found problems with the application process and difficulty getting information when they had questions on that process. My office worked hard to help those businesses. However, now we have numerous businesses in Niagara that have been approved for the grant they applied for six weeks ago, but haven't received any money. Businesses like Chip and Charlie's, Reg Candy Kitchen, the Fortery Golf Course, all locally owned businesses, local customers, they need the grant to survive. Money that businesses desperately need they face a second province-wide lockdown, shut their doors at no fault of their own to keep our community safe. My office has worked to get information for these businesses, to provide them with actual timelines, and they have heard nothing from this government. Numerous emails to the minister's office left unanswered, week after week after week. To not get back to MPP offices when local businesses have questioned 
is shameful. I call on this government, take some time to respond to your emails. Allow us to help small businesses in our community that so desperately need assistance. You promised them the money, now actually follow through. Thank you. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Markham. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the number of people in Markham Unionville who will need long-term care is expected to rise over the next decade. That's why earlier this month, I was thrilled when our government made an historic investment in 80 new long-term care projects across Ontario, including one in my riding of Markham Unionville. The Mongshan Markham project is being allocated 160 new spaces in creating a net new home through the construction of a new building as part of a campus of care. I want to take this opportunity to thank Mongshong Foundation, all care homes and healthcare workers across Ontario in continuing to provide dedicated care to our seniors throughout the pandemic. Mr. Speaker, protecting our loved ones and ensuring they receive care they deserve is at the centre of everything we do. The investment of $933 million to 80 new long-term care projects is on top of the $1.75 billion already earmarked for our government's commitment to deliver 30,000 new long-term care spaces in 10 years. With this new allocation, Mr. Speaker, Ontario now has 20,161 new and 15,918 redevelopment spaces in development pipeline, bringing our government closer to our goal of building new long-term care spaces for our beloved seniors. Mr. Speaker, as Ontario continues to tackle COVID-19, our government will continue to take steps forward to creating a 21st century long-term care sector and provide the highest quality for our most vulnerable people where and when they need it. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I applaud the outstanding work of my community in securing the funding for a new hospital in Windsor, Essex, that was mentioned in this year's budget. My MPP colleagues, Percy Hatfield, Tross Natashak, and I, along with hospital CEO David Moucher, the board, local mayor, city council, town councils, and community members, worked collaboratively across party lines for many years to secure this funding for our community, and will continue to do so to ensure the hospital project moves forward. While this funding is welcome news, the budget om omissions show that this government doesn't prioritize helping the majority of Ontarians recover from this pandemic. Nearly $800 million in funding cut from education leaves our student and education workers at risk. No increase for ODSP or OW will mean that many families in my riding will continue to live in deep poverty without access to affordable housing. There are 5,400 people on the wait list for housing in Windsor. Workers still have had will have to choose between staying home if sick with COVID-19 or being able to pay rent or buy groceries because this government won't support a provincial paid sick days plan. The restrictive business grant means local business, small businesses will continue to struggle or permanently close. Casino workers and frontline healthcare heroes have been left out too. Speaker, MPPs don't vote on a budget based on one issue alone. This was an opportunity to address the struggles of families in my riding Yet the government's budget falls much too short and fails far too many. I will continue to advocate for my constituents on the issues important to them, like those I just raised, while working collaboratively with this government, local politicians and community members to move the hospital project forward. Speaker, I hope the government will do the same. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Orléans. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's an absolute honour to rise today on the first day of Be a Donor Month to raise awareness about the importance of organ and tissue donation. In Ontario today, there are over 1,600 people waiting for life-saving transplant, one of whom will die every three days. In my riding of Orleans, there are 18 people on the waiting list for this life-saving transplant. And yet, Mr. Speaker, only 35 per cent of eligible Ontarians have registered to consent to be a donor. The Trillium Gift of Life Network is doing an amazing job at promoting and supporting organ and tissue donations across the province. They also work tires, tirelessly to improve the system so that more lives can be saved. 
And today, I want to do my part to raise awareness and challenge my colleagues here in the legislature and my constituents back at home to take two minutes to register to be a donor at beadonor.ca. Mr. Speaker, this last year has challenged us in ways many thought were impossible. We've demonstrated how much we care for each other. We've come together to protect our collective health by staying home and wearing a mask. Now it's time for us to do that again. Show our care for our neighbours. Register to be an organ and tissue donor at beadonor.ca. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Durham. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, the Oshawa Senior Community Centres and Bowmanville Older Adults Association and senior centres across the province have been playing an essential role in the lives of our seniors uh, during this pandemic. And, uh, and during this time, over the last more than a year now, many have provided virtual programming and activities to help keep seniors connected uh, during the pandemic. On March 8th, I announced uh, locally an investment of $250,000 from our government for 2020-2021 as part of our government's funding for seniors' active living centres. Uh, uh, Speaker, Executive Director of the OSCC, Sandy Black, uh, shared with me um, the importance of this continued funding for their centre and shared with me a testimony from one of the family members um, of their participants who said, uh, quote, your program has been such a great help to us for the last two years and especially throughout this hard time with COVID. Father misses your program, your team and his friends at the centre so much. We have our good and bad days, but for sure, looks forward to daily calls with the group at 11 a.m. I notice such a difference in his outlook when he gets off the phone calls. Thank you so much for all of the thoughtful one-on-one -on -one calls, newsletters, gifts, group calls, and tablet. He is enjoying all so much. I want to thank the OSCC for helping our seniors stay safe and connected during this pandemic. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. And there's nothing like a call from a family member that brings uh, the pandemic and the crisis that we're in uh, home to you. Uh, last week, my son called me and said, Dad, I got a COVID positive test. Um, he informed me that he was doing fine. He had a little bit of tenderness under his eyes, but he was relatively good. We've been in contact with him, watching him, and just making sure that he's okay. Last night he called me and uh, he says, Dad, I'm really feeling bad. I said, ah, April Fool's on you. And it wasn't an April Fool's. He was telling me how his chest was hurting and how it was difficult for him to, to get oriented and getting up in the morning and that things were really starting to hurt. And uh, that really brings it home to you. And when you can't go out and help your boy, it's tough. His mom, uh, his mom called him as well. And she wants to go out and help him, but you can't. And uh, the best advice that I gave him, and we both agreed over the call, is tell your mom to stay at home. You know, we'll, we'll see how you get through this. It really brings it home because you always think it's going to be somebody else. Because I don't have grandparents, and you know, I don't have people in long-term care home. But you, you finally see what others are experiencing. I want to tell my boy, you're going to be fine. We're going to get through this. Your Easter eggs are going to be waiting for you when we can get together at home. And uh, that's going to have a huge hug for you, boy. And I want to wish everybody across Ontario and Algoma Manitoulin, stay safe this weekend. Let's be mindful of what we're doing. Use social media, gather with your family as best as you can. Be smart, be safe, be wise, take care. Happy Easter, everyone. Member statements, the member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm rising in the legislature today to pay tribute to Mr. Ken Maynard of the Rotary Club of Woodbridge, located in the riding of Ontario's Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. Tragically, Mr. Maynard recently passed away on his 87th birthday. In 1955, immediately following Hurricane Hazel, the Rotary Club of Woodbridge was first chartered. Following this, Ken became a member of the club in 1962 to be more active within the community. Ken's family arrived in Woodbridge in the 1850s when Woodbridge was just known as a cottage destination for those living in Toronto. Speaker, I also want to add that Ken's family 
also has a connection to this legislature. His father-in-law was a Conservative MPP from 1945 to 1948, representing the riding of York South. Ken's knowledge around the history of Woodbridge left many people speechless. If you ask anyone who knew him, they will tell you exactly the same thing. In 2013, Ken was awarded the Lieutenant Governor's Lifetime Award for Contributions to Heritage. He lived life, being a, uh, serving, uh, he lived life believing in service above all. In his 59 years of Rotary service, Ken never missed a meeting. Even while on vacation, which only happened once a year to attend the Rotary International Conference, he made sure to attend the local meetings of the host city. On behalf of the government and all Rotarians, we remember the legacy that Ken Maynard left behind. Our province and our entire world is a better place because of him. Thank you, Speaker. Member's statements. The member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you, Speaker. I'm so pleased that Premier and the Minister of Finance included Trillium Health Partners Mississauga site rebuild in this year's budget. This is a great news for the people of Mississauga and especially the residents of Mississauga East Cooksville. All five of my children were born at Trillium Health Partners in Mississauga. This world-class healthcare facility has provided constant and exemplary service to not only my family, but the families of Mississauga. And under the leadership of CEO Michelle DeManuel and her exceptional team, continues to serve the people of Peel Region and Mississauga throughout the pandemic and beyond. Our government is investing in expansion projects in the region of Peel through collaboration with Trillium Health Partners. These investments will support historic hospital expansion and construction projects. This expansion not only creates an inpatient care tower at the Queensway site in Etobicoke, but also completely rebuild the Mississauga Hospital to increase capacity and address growth needs. I'm very glad that with the support of our government, the people and growing families of Mississauga, and especially Mississauga East Cooksville and Peel Region can count on continued excellence and service from Tr Trillium Health Partner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. The, the